A letter to this address will always reach me. Yours sincerely. Signed, the Marquise de Monstier. In the spring of 1907, the Baron... In the spring of 1907, the Baroness von Sedwitz sent the following cablegram from Europe to Bishop Spalding. Bishop Spalding, Peoria, Illinois, USA. I'm aware of your efforts to shield yourself from exposure. When Catholics know the history of your hidden vices, as I do, you must flee Peor Peoria. This I shall accomplish. Signed, Baroness von Setwitz. Rome, fearing exposure from the letters and charges of the Caldwell sisters, prevailed upon Bishop Spalding to resign the bishop, bishopric of Peoria, which he did in September 1908. Rome, pursuing her usual policy in such cases, immediately promoted him to a nominal archbishop, archbishopric, which gives him the honor of the title without any subjects, so that in case of exposure it could not be alleged that he is an actual charge of a diocese. However, he is still in politics entertaining President Taft and ex-President Roosevelt at his home in Peoria, and belittling Governor Woodrow Wilson as a schoolmaster and therefore unfit to be President of the United States. The abjuration of Roman Catholicism by these eminent women and their charges against Archbishop Spalding, who had been their professed friend and trusted advisor in whom they placed unbounded confidence, aroused my deepest horror and indignation. I kept saying to myself, if such a prelate, the idol of American Catholicism and of liberal Protestantism, if such a prelate, the idol of American Catholicism and of liberal pro Protestantism, is an Atheist and infidel, a liar and sensual hypocrite, is not the Vatican clerical system rotten, root and branch? My reading, observation, meditation, and experience gradually forced me to doubt the possibility of purifying the Roman Catholic priesthood, and ultimately led me to agree with the words written me by the Baroness von Sedwitz. There is not, and never can be, modern Catholicism, and should ever the political necessity arise for purifying all, re all religion, Catholicity would then and there be wiped off the face of the earth. During the crusade above mentioned, many priests of the Roman Catholic Church talked with me about the futility of my efforts, saying in substance, Father Crowley, you are wasting your time and money in trying to purify the priesthood. The system stands for power and pelf. It cannot be changed. Christ himself, if there is a Christ, could not purify it. Reverend Thomas F. Cashman, the prominent pastor of St. Jarleth's Parish, Chicago, the bosom friend and confidential agent of Archbishop Ireland, said to me repeatedly, The more I see and read of monks, nuns, priests, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, and popes, the less I am a priest, and indeed, the less I am a Roman Catholic. He also made this statement, While I believe the Roman Catholic Church will live forever, I believe the devil has his knee on its neck in, his, in this propaganda. I am prepared to prove all that I state. And if I cannot prove it, my proper home is the penitentiary. He frequently exclaimed, Oh, if the Roman Catholic Church would only uncover her sandals. Early in our crusade, in the first week of January 1901, Reverend 
Cashman and Hodnett representing a score or more of the prominent priests of Chicago went to Washington, D.C. and personally filed charges of priestly corruption and crime against brother priests, including Reverend Peter J. Muldoon with papal delegate Martinelli. Copies of charges had already been sent by registered mail to the Vatican. Reverend Cashman called to the attention of the delegate several grave charges of, cr of clerical immorality. The Pope's representative shrugged his shoulders, smiled, and said, The Vatican pays no attention whatever to such charges. Reverend Hodnett, Reverend Hodnett staggered back in blank amazement and, making the sign of the cross, said, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, protect us! Mother of God, save the church! <laughs>